Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool snowman looking up into the night sky. Hey everyone, it's your girl Amanda the Buzzed Artist and I make free painting tutorials every single week on Wednesday. So if you're new to my channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. Alright, let's get to it. Here are the items we're going to be using for this painting. So we're going to start out with a 11 by 14 canvas. It looks a little weird only because this is an old painting that I just painted over with gesso. So I'll be also using three types of brushes. I'm going to be using a uh, three quarter flat wash brush. You'll notice that these are new brushes, yay, from Simply Simmons. I'm super excited. Uh, th this is also going to be a number 10 filbert brush you're going to be using, as well as a number three detail round brush, okay? And then we're going to be using five colors. We're we have a red, uh, ooh, <laughs> that leaked over. We have a primary red, a primary blue, primary yellow, uh, titanium white, and Mars black. So we'll be using these colors. And I will be including a link to all the items that we use here in this video in the description below. So please be sure to check that out. Okay. I also have my water and my towel because now I'm ready to rock and roll. Okay. This is actually my first time painting with this brush, with these brushes. So I'm super, super excited. Oh, these are fun. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my three quarter flat wash. I'm going to dip it in my water. And then what I'm going to do is Actually, we're going to turn it this way. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the uh, blue background that our snowman is set against. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take some blue. So I'm loading my brush evenly with the blue color, just like so. And then I'm adding some white, okay? I want to create this like baby blue color. This is like this is such a nice like it's a nice winter color so you really won't go wrong with this color here okay and I'm just gonna add a little bit of water to this so it waters it down okay because once I have that color what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just lay down the color on my brush on my canvas now I'm gonna make sure I leave some room for his head so I don't have to like really you know, waste a lot of the blue. So I'm just going to just make a general outline. Like right around here is where I think his head's gonna go and then his his body is here. So I'm gonna paint pretty much all around this and then leave the middle unpainted with the blue. Now, um, don't worry if, you know, you're not entirely sure where uh, the, you know, your figure of your snowman, you can always go back in with white and kind of um, play around with this part. So don't be worried. So now we are full fledged into the Christmas season. I am super stoked. I love Christmas. It's so much fun. It's just like a great way to, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, it's cold and you know, you get to stay inside and you get to eat a lot of cool, good food with your family. And that's really what it's all about. Do you do you have any fun holiday traditions you like to do? Comment below. I'd love to hear what they are. My family, so we, you know, I'm a, I come from an Italian family, um, and usually what we like to do is, typically on Christmas Eve, my grandmother does the Feast of the Seven Fishes. So that if you're not from an Italian background or even um, European background, the Feast of the Seven Fishes is um, you're just making dishes. Uh, you know, a meal, uh, several meals really in one sitting that incorporates seven types of fish. So my grandmother will, you know, she'll do calamari and then she'll do uh, crab legs, uh, you know, and pasta. And then she'll do, um, let's see what, it, oh yeah, like shrimp cocktail. Like she, she comes up with so many creative ways to incorporate, you know, all the seven fishes. Um, and then, so that's Christmas Eve. And then we usually wait until midnight and we open presents. So I, 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 know, I know this is different with every family, obviously, but I do know some families actually wait until Christmas Day. Um, I know we used to do that when we were kids because, you know, Santa and all that. But um, now that we're kind of older, we just decide, okay, you know what, we're just going to, 
we're just going to open presents right when midnight strikes. We pretty much all, you know, congratulate and, and say, you know, Merry Christmas. We give each other kisses and hugs. And then uh, we go ahead and open gifts. Then we go to church. Then we usually go to bed. Sometimes my mom will be daring enough to go want to go to midnight mass because that's my mom. <laughs> Um, but usually we'll sleep and then go to church in the morning and then come back and just feast on delicious homemade food. That is what Christmas means to me, my love. <laughs> so comment below. What do you, what do you all do for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? If you have any traditions, I'd love to hear them. This will actually be Ethan and mine's, uh, first Christmas together married. So, um... So we're really happy. Um, just <laughs> a year in review, uh, or you know, the, since our since our wedding, a, a review. It's been married life is <laughs> really awesome. I really enjoy it. Um, to be perfectly honest, being engaged was probably one of the most stressful times of my life because I was planning a wedding, and you know, you know how it goes when you're planning a wedding. Everyone is kind of like on their wits end. You know, and you want everything to be perfect, and you're stressing out about everything. Um, and you know, basically, I tell everybody when we like right after we got married, it feels like we were, you know, it, it, married life feels like engaged life, except that we're not trying to plan a wedding, so all this stress is not there anymore. Um, obviously, you know, we have we have married married stuff that every couple goes through, but I gotta say, I love it. Okay, so if you have a canvas that is thicker than mine, mine right now I just have a uh, thin canvas, you can go ahead and paint the sides of this as well. So that way you don't have to frame this. If you haven't, if you haven't told, uh, I guess if you couldn't tell already, I am a huge fan of Christmas. Um, basically like Halloween and Christmas and Thanksgiving are, you know, my top holidays. Um, and I was talking to Ethan about this. I think if I had to rate all the holidays together, um, I would say Thanksgiving is probably one of my, is my favorite followed by Christmas and closely followed by Halloween. Okay. And one other thing too, if you find that your canvas or that your acrylic is not really carrying the paint and you're, you end up losing, using a lot of paint all the time, um, one simple trick is to just add more water to your brush and that will help your acrylic to drag a little more. That's always a good trick in my book. So this is pretty much the background. I'm gonna wait for this part to dry and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and start to make the arms of our snowman. Okay, so it looks like that my background is nice and dry, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is work on the arms that are coming out of our snowman. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use the detail round brush for this part. I do like a lot of control, and I wanna do the outline of, the, of those arms that are reaching up into the sky um, first so that I can later go in if I want to and just fill in with another color or sorry, with another brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush. So I got it nice and wet. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to add in some yellow. And then I'm gonna add in some red. So I'm pretty much making like an orange color. I do wanna add more yellow than red for these because um, red is a very dominating color and it could it could end up like skewing the color of um, your, your brown. Uh, so once I got that orange color, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to make a brown color. Now, if you notice that, you know, like let's say for example, you notice that your brown looks like a little bit too green, just add a little bit of red. And that should, that should give you back your earth tones that you're looking for, see? See how nice that looks? Yeah, all right. So I'm just making sure to wipe the excess off on the side of my palette here. I'm just kind of twisting my brush just like so. Okay, so now that I kind of have a color that I'm happy with, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the uh, left side of, of our snowman 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start um, pretty much like, a, like this part around here in his body. And then I'm just gonna make a line kind of curving up, going up like this, out, and out like this, out like so, and then just like that. So if your paint is kind of dragging a little bit, just add a little bit more water. It's just, it's just an indication that it needs to be it needs to be a little more fluid and less gooped with paint. So, so that's kind of the uh, the first part here. The second part, you're going to want to add more body and meat to the twig. So I'm going to go back down here and just work on the other side of that branch. So I'm going to follow kind of the same pattern, go up, up, up. Then I'm going to thin it down and kind of meet it towards the top so they converge, just like so. Looks like that. And then I'm just going to make some more little tendrils coming out. Now, when it comes to making branches, um, you want to you want to think about you want to think about it this way. You want your brush to be pretty wet. You want it to be moist um, because what's going to happen is your paint's going to glide off your brush even more. And what I'm doing is as I'm making my branches, you know, I start at the base here and then when I get to the, and when I get to the part where I need to make the end portion of the, of the branch there, I kind of release a little bit of pressure and I let it trail off. You'll notice if you ever go outside and look at branches, they are very thin at the tips, but then they kind of get uh, bigger towards the base. So that's that's kind of the, the key when you're making branches, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this part in. And don't worry about this area particularly because we're gonna go over that with our white when this all dries up. This is just a way for you to. This is just a way for you to kind of get, uh, I guess, in general, where everything's going to go. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm going to do the other side, and it's going to be the same premise. Okay, so I'm just going to take it on this side here, and I'm going to do. I'm going to move this guy off a little bit. I'm going to go up. Up, 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 up. Okay. And then I'm just going to make the branches. Now, another thing too with branches, uh, kind of a thing to note, notice how when they branch off, they make the letter Y like that. Keep that in mind. When you're making branches, think about how the letter Y looks and that's that's how you do your branch. I'm I'm being totally serious here. When it comes to painting, I like to keep it as simple as possible. So consider that when you're making this. Okay. And then I'm just gonna go back in and just add in more meat to my to my to my um, twig, my branches. Okay. Now I'm going to let you be as creative as you want with this because if you want to add like more branches and whatnot, you know, one like more offshoots, go for it. Just remember to keep your, your brush nice and wet and to trail off at the tips so that, you know, they, they act like your typical kind of branches. Okay. Maybe do another one here. Yeah, I'll probably do another one here. Okay. And I'll include a stencil of all this stuff so you can have that as well to follow along. All you have to do is click on the description and the link below. Um, give me your email and I'll send it. I'll send my entire library of stencils that I've done, including this one, so you'll have that on hand. OK. 
Okay, beautiful. So that is our snowman arms, okay? But you can always move to um, your filbert number 10 brush and just, just use that white and go ahead and clean up the edges here. Once this dries, we're going to move on to the next step, which is adding in our features for our snowman. Okay, so now that this is relatively dry, what I'm going to work on next is the facial features of our snowman. So what I want to do now is I want to do his nose. So he's got a, a carrot nose and it's pointed straight up. So it looks like he's looking up into the sky. So what I'm going to use is my number 10 filbert and I'm going to dip it in some water, get it nice and wet. So I'm going to take some red, I'm going to take yellow, I'm going to make orange, and I'm going to add white to this so it's not as like in your face. Okay, so that's my orange. Now what I'm going to do is, now that I have my brush, it's nicely loaded, I'm going to go to the top here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a triangle, like a cone shape. So I'm going to start like, uh, I'm going to give myself about an inch of clearance from the top. And I'm just going to, with my brush, very lightly, just make a straight line to the top of his head, maybe a little further in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a a little curve. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make another cone going down, another line going down. Okay, so that's that's his nose, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill this part in. So that's part one of his nose. Now you'll also notice that there is like a shadow that happens on this side of his nose on the left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just with that same color, I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of blue, the tiniest, tiniest bit uh, in with that, with that orange color we made previously. All I'm looking for is just like a, a hint darker. I'm just gonna add a little bit more red to this part as well. So once I got my brush nicely coated, what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to the left side of the carrot, and I'm just going to add in that color. And because my paint below is still very wet, I'm just going to very lightly just blend the colors together. Okay. So that's all there really is to it with the carrot nose. So you can go back and forth between the two colors that you previously made to um, go back and forth. But uh, yeah, so this is that's pretty much how you make that nose. So I can always go back in with that same color, with that lighter color, and just blend it like so. But I'm happy with it. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to work on his like tie. So he's got a tie that is made from holly leaves and the berries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down to my detail round number three and we're going to make the color green. So I'm just going to take some blue, I'm going to take some yellow, okay, and I probably want to do more yellow then blue so I want to get a nice green 
And what I'm also gonna add is a tad bit of white, just so I can lighten this up a little bit. Okay. Because once I have that color, what I'm gonna do now, so I have my brush nicely loaded, it's not goopy with paint. I'm gonna go to where the the two cusps of the of the, his head and his body meet. And I'm gonna go to the center. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one line like this. So the holly leaves are very spiky. So it's got it's got one, two. Think about it like waves, like one wave, two waves, three waves, okay? So on that third wave, it's gonna to go to a point, and then you're gonna repeat on the other side. So you're gonna go like one, and then two. Very easy, very simple. Just like that. Nothing crazy, nothing out of this world, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this part in. And of course, like all things, if your brush, if you're having trouble, you know, getting a fine point with your brush, simply add water. And that should help make a big difference. Okay. Now I'm gonna repeat the same on the other side. So I'm gonna start at the center and I'm gonna go move my brush up, just like so. So wave number one, okay, wave number two. Then it comes to a point at the end. Okay. Then I'm gonna repeat the same on the other side, just kind of mirroring it. Wave number one, wave number two, and then it comes to a point. Okay. That's pretty much the basics there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this part in with that same color. go in, you know, refine if you want to add a bit more to your holly. That's totally fine. But I'm pretty happy with this. Now, I want to add one more thing. So, I do want to add a bit of a like a, an accent color to the holly leaves themselves. So, what I'm going to do is with that same green we were just using, I'm just going to add a lot more yellow to that. And I'm also going to add a tiny bit of white. Okay, so it's obviously a lot lighter than the previous color. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the one of the holly leaves and I'm just going to just make a line going from one tip to the next. Just like so. Maybe I should make this a little lighter so you can see what I'm doing. So, got it to the tip here. Then what you're gonna do is, you're just going to fill in the bottom portion of your ivy. And because your paint underneath is still wet, this is gonna look really cool. Okay. And you're gonna repeat the same on the other side. Okay, so I'm starting from tip to tip, connect the line, and then just fill underneath. And again, water is great to help you get those nice crisp edges. Cool. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the holly berries, or the berries that are actually on the holly itself. So all you're gonna do is I'm gonna take that same detail round and I'm just gonna dip it in some uh, red paint. Okay. And simply what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make little circles. Just like so.
Now you can do as many berries as you want. I'm going to probably do about five or six, I think. Because that's kind of what I'm feeling. Okay. Yeah, I think that's cute. Okay, cool. Now there's also, let's see here. So I do want to do his features now. So his smile, his eyes. So we're going to keep with the detail round. I cleaned it so it's nice and dry, or sorry, it's nice and uh, clean and wet. And I'm going to dip it in my black, okay? And I'm just getting all the excess paint off by rolling it on the sides. Now what I'm going to do is simply is I'm just going to go to the tops uh, on either side of the carrot. And I'm just going to put a dot for his eyes. Very easy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do his smile. So I got the first part of his smile there. I'm, going to, I'm just going to mix, match that with the other side like so. And very slowly, we're just going to make a upside down bell curve, meaning I'm just going to start like this. It's going to go down and up, just like so. And on the side of his mouth, on the right, he's got his mouth open. And the way we're going to show that is we're going to go right to here on his smile. And I'm just going to, with my brush, just add in a little bit of a bump right there. Okay, just like so. Okay, very simple, very easy. Okay. All right, awesome. So I'm just going to fill in a little bit of this part here to show his tongue. And his tongue really is just like a little a little curve, just like so. And I'm going to fill the rest in with black. OK. How cute, huh? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want to do some rosy cheeks on him. I think that would be really adorable. So all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my filbert this time and I'm just going to take some white. I want to take a little bit of red. I don't want to do too much red. I want to make a nice pink. Nice pink color, just like so. Just like that. And I'm making sure I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. Actually, I want it to be kind of on the drier side with this part. Because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to both sides of his cheek. And I'm going to very lightly tap the color on the canvas here. Okay. So that's one. And I'm also just tapping so I can kind of force some more blending to happen. But I'm just, I'm taking it out to the edges of his face and just blending the color out so it's not as like in your face. Oh, he's so cute. I love him. Okay, awesome. So now, we, now we're at the final part. We're going to be doing little snowflake, aka stars that are falling down into the sky. And he's looking up and he's like, oh, whoa, it's part of me floating in the sky. Whoa, meta. Anyway, so we're going to use the detail round brush for this part. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to dip it in my white. Okay, very simple, very easy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to make the, the snowflakes. So really to make snowflakes in this context, you're just going to do a line going down, a line going across, and then two lines going like so. So this could look like a star. It could also act as snowflakes. And I'm going to vary the sizes of my snowflakes. I'm going to do some that are like bigger, and I'm going to do some that are smaller. What's important is you want to do a good deal of these. Like this is where you get like the, the magic twinkle.
Oh, I did want to add one more thing. So I'm going to take a little bit of white and I want to put it on the holly berries as a little reflection piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a little line just to show that there's like a reflection point happening here. Okay, nothing crazy. Just wanted to go ahead and add that part. If you enjoyed painting with me today, please be sure to like this video and to subscribe to my channel so that you can see more awesome painting tutorials from me in the future. So I will see you all next Wednesday for the next painting tutorial. See you later!